Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Gebekli Tepe has its fair share of ancient mysteries and this small bone object often referred to as a spatula is one of them. Found in 2011 at the iconic 11,500 year old site in southeastern Anatolia and measuring just 5.3 centimeters by 1.9 and with a thickness of just 3 millimeters. You'd be forgiven for walking past it in a museum, but according to some, it is an incredibly important artifact because it's the first pictorial representation of the famous Gebekli Tepe T shaped pillars ever discovered. Or is it? The more I research Gebekli Tepe, the more I am sceptical about the claims, but I am willing to hear out any hypothesis and interpretation if it is backed up by a sound argument. I myself am not an archaeologist, but I am an ancient history enthusiast and I have got an academic background studying geology at master's level at university. So I can read papers and evaluate data, information and evidence and see if arguments hold merit or are flawed. The claims regarding the small bone artifact are something I can look into without bias. It's something that's always split opinion. And so now, with a good knowledge of pre-pottery Neolithic Turkey, I feel I can give my own independent take. So, first of all, let's take a look at the claims. According to author and researcher Andrew Collins, and I should say that many people do agree with him, this small bone artifact shows the first recorded depiction of Gebekli Tepe's T-shaped pillars. Secondly, the etching on its surface might well be the earliest known use of a 3D perspective in prehistoric art. And thirdly, the plaque's finely carved imagery may indicate the main enclosures of Gebekli Tepe are aligned with astronomical targets. Because the object is a 5cm long damaged piece of sculpted bone, these are obviously some bold claims. But around 10 years ago, I know there was a lot of discussion and also a lot of headlines were generated. Apparently the bone spatula shows the two large central pillars of an enclosure, but which enclosure is unknown and also impossible to tell. Collins says the object could be a pendant, maybe an amulet or talisman. Maybe by displaying the central pillars, the object had mystical properties in order to connect it to the site, maybe bestowing good luck to the owner. According to Collins, a more detailed examination of the artifact shows it is carved in a three-dimensional perspective, because halfway down the right-hand edge of the left pillar, a line rises at an angle towards the centre of the image, maybe depicting a retaining wall. Centrally placed below the twin pillars is also apparently a pedestal, from which rises two lines that converge at the centre of the plaque, and this has been interpreted as a possible walkway leading into the centre of the enclosure. The fact the lines converge is another example of a 3D perspective. Collins also says that the lines that make up this walkway also give the impression of a long-legged abstract stick man standing in front of or between the stones, implying the artifact has a multi-layered meaning. It is then noted that the main lines of the plaque converge at this deep peck mark, and this is positioned centrally, which emphasizes the hole's importance. Collins says that this peck mark has a vertical line either side of it, which creates a likeness to a specific standing stone in enclosure D, because this stone contains a hole. There is also a similar hold stone in enclosure C, and they clearly had some kind of function or significance. Maybe such holes had some ritual or religious significance, maybe astronomical, or maybe something else entirely. So if the peck mark on the bone spatula is the hole in the enclosure, according to Collins, it may well imply that during rites or ceremonies, entrance may well have stood inside the circular enclosure, facing the hole and looking out to the north, with most of the enclosures at Gebekli Tepe facing Deneb, a star in the constellation of Cygnus. You can read more on Collins' website, and I've linked it below in the description. 
Apparently, these peck marks above the T-shaped pillars might also be deliberate, as they too look to be deep, and therefore likely significant, and these could well be celestial objects. According to Collins, it's very possible that these are stars in the constellation of Cygnus, not Orion as you may think, and apparently the layout of the stars matches the constellation in 9000 BC, as observed from Gobekli Tepe. Again, more on this on andrewcollins.com. So, in a nutshell, they are the claims regarding the bone object, and if the interpretation is correct, it is of course an astonishing discovery. And, unsurprisingly, it did provoke a response from the German archaeologists who have worked at Gebekli Tepe for many years. They wrote a paper concerning the object, and outlined why any premature interpretation of the imagery displayed on the spatula should be avoided. Art history is a complex subject, and the interpretation of any prehistoric art is by no means straightforward. We first have to identify what we see, we then have to see how the subject matter relates to what we know about the culture it belongs to, and then we need to find the meaning what the artist is trying to tell us. With the bone spatula we do lack archaeological context, being found below the plough horizon in a deposit without architectural remains or walking levels. We don't know how old the object is, so the only real way to get an indication of the age and context is by comparing the iconography to similar dated artistic depictions. Right now we simply don't know a lot, but most agree it is likely to be pre-pottery Neolithic in age. It should be said that the German archaeologists that wrote the paper were not working to actively disprove Collins' interpretation as well, but were really highlighting that the art displayed on the object is not obvious. And right now, it is almost impossible to get an exact understanding of what we are looking at. The iconography is open to interpretation, because the object is damaged, worn, incomplete, out of context, and the style of art isn't particularly common across Gebekli Tepe. As it stands, it is a unique object. You could disagree with Collins' interpretation, and say that if you were inside an enclosure, the pillars would be seen as facing each other, and not side by side as the bone object seems to portray. But of course you could easily counter this by saying the artist was ensuring the T-shaped form was prominent, so it was clear what the object was being portrayed. Furthermore, maybe there are some undiscovered enclosures at Gebekli Tepe that do have central pillars in such an arrangement. Another problem is the fact the pillars, walls and potential human are interconnected with lines. At Gebekli Tepe, the vast majority of the art depicts objects, humans and animals individually. They are not often interwoven. But again, you could counter this by highlighting Pillar 56 of Enclosure H, where the style of art seems to be different from everything else, as the outline of one animal also marks the contour of another, showing a clear interwoven appearance. You could also point out the high quality of art across Gebekli Tepe, the excellent craftsmanship on the pillars, and compare it to how badly the artist has portrayed imagery on this small object, with a somewhat rough and abstract style. But again, you could counter this by saying the small object wasn't carved by a skilled craftsman. Maybe it's a personal object, carved by its owner, and it's his or her own way of drawing the T-shaped pillars of an enclosure. The German archaeologists also offer another interpretation of the imagery, and believe it may be depicting a type of squatting or crouching animal, of which we see many examples in stone at Gebekli Tepe. They do of course see the pitfalls in their own interpretation, and can see it is by no means definitive, but in the same respect, they don't think it's definitely showing T-shaped pillars. Unless we find comparable examples, we'll probably never know for sure what this small bone object is showing, and at this stage it's certainly not obvious. Last weekend I posted a picture on Instagram and Twitter, and the response from followers was mixed, a small indication there will probably never be a general consensus as to what it's showing. 
So, what do I think? My opinion on this matter is probably irrelevant, but on this channel I do like to give an opinion and hopefully open up a discussion in the comments section below, because I do value your feedback. For a start, I do agree with the points raised by the archaeologists, that any interpretation is by no means clear and obvious. We don't know the context of the object, and it is of course worn, damaged and incomplete. We also don't know with any certainty what the object itself even was, with one possibility being a tool and another being a bull roarer. As stated earlier, before we can even think about interpretation, we first need to identify what we see. So I found a high resolution image and put it into Photoshop for a closer look. The image I've used is around 3500 pixels square, so it is good resolution for a detailed analysis. Sometimes you can trace the lines through the damaged parts, and having no preconceptions and using a keen eye, this is what I drew. In the diagram on Colin's website, a line goes down here, but looking in high resolution, and this line looks to be natural damage, the cracking of the bone artifact and you can clearly see how this man-made line continues. Now I've coloured in all the damage and cracks in red, so you can see which lines are man-made and which are the cracks and damage in my opinion. Taking an even closer look, I believe it's also most likely the line is continuous, and actually goes like this. Now, due to the size of the bone fragment, and due to the symmetry of the overall picture, minus the triangular section in the middle, I don't think it is too much of a stretch to imagine that this is what the overall image looked like. This line here also bends to the right, mimicking the line on the left. But what about the peck marks that are interpreted as the enclosure porthole and stars, as discussed by Collins? Well, I zoomed right in, and I have to say that these are the marks that I believe were purposefully done. In the central section, there are two peck marks, well, vertical lines and not one. Both are the same size, and also have the same prominence, and one doesn't favour the other. I guess the one on the right is a little more worn, so it does look a tad wider. To me they are not natural cracks, and do not continue above or below, so I certainly believe that these marks were made on purpose. Alternatively, they could well be imperfections in the bone, and could have become more pronounced as the object was made and polished. I don't think the right hand mark can be a specific depiction of a porthole, because it's clearly a line, not a circular hole, and there are two of equal size and shape. The possible stars above the main image, I also think are a bit of a stretch. I don't know how you can specifically highlight these three marks, because there are also more prominent marks. I have to say I don't think that any of these marks are part of the image. That's my own opinion, and you may disagree and that's fine. So, fading out the bone and looking at the reconstructed lines, including the lines that I believe are missing, this is what I think was engraved on the bone object. What is below we really don't know. So, you can look at this and still see two pillars side by side, but the shape of the central section leads me to believe that these are not pillars. The central section is this shape for a reason. To me this part does look like a foot of some kind, and you can even see five toes. I can't help but think that this central section is a head, with the shape maybe implying a bird, and this tip is the beak. To me, these two lines could well be eyes, making this section the neck, with the head cowering down. And what bird has a long neck, and can often be seen cowering down? That's right, you may have guessed it, a vulture. These two sections thought to be the tops of T-shaped pillars are each marked with four lines, giving them detail the artist thought was necessary, and I think that this detail is more evidence they are not T-shaped pillars. To the best of my knowledge the tops of T-shaped pillars were not crossed by lines. 
It's maybe worth noting that vulture depictions at the later site of Çatalhöyük in Turkey often have square or oval sections with lines, likely indicating the feathered texture. I've stared at this image for a long time now, so I'll just come out with my own interpretation. I think that this is a stylized picture of a vulture, maybe made by an amateur artist, and the bird is stood up and not in flight, and we are looking at it from the front. These sections are the big feathered shoulders of the bird. Is shoulders the right word? And hence the wings are back. But it looks to have human legs and feet, unless, of course, they are just out of proportion and stylized. Interestingly, bird figures with human legs are not actually strange in pre pottery Neolithic Turkey. This chlorite vessel from the 12,000 year old site of Kortik Tepe, a site even older than Gebekli Tepe, shows small bird headed human figures stood between snakes and other creatures. On this vessel, we can see strange figures with bird heads as well. At the site of Çatalhöyük, which dates between 7500 BC and 6400 BC, we see clear depictions of vultures with human legs. Some have interpreted this image as priests or priestesses wearing vulture costumes and conducting a death ritual. It's possible the bird-headed human figures could be humans wearing shamanic bird costumes, or maybe they are in fact vulture deities. Millennia later in ancient Egypt, the patron deity of Upper Egypt was the vulture goddess Nekbet. Her origins go back to pre-dynastic times. She was referred to as the mother of mothers who hath existed from the beginning. She was also the patron of nature and childbirth, who was depicted as the nurse of the future king during his infancy. Back to Gebekli Tepe, and if we look at Pillar 43, this vulture also has strange legs and it also looks to be pregnant. Is this a goddess in childbirth? But also, the vulture on the bone plaque might not have human legs, and they could be stylized legs of the vulture. If you look at pictures of the bearded vulture of the Middle East and Northwest Asia, its legs are actually surprisingly long and thick. On the plaque, the legs are open, and this object could well be phallic in nature, which in my opinion means it could be fertility related, the impregnation of the vulture. And again, on Pillar 43, the vulture could be pregnant. Vultures are certainly significant in pre-pottery Neolithic Turkey, especially at Gebekli Tepe, with a number of examples in stone. Their importance continued into the later cultures of ancient Turkey, and also to many cultures around the world. Many cultures have linked the vulture to rebirth renewal, motherhood protection, and so on. In some cultures of Africa, the vulture was a symbol of fertility. Some tribes believe the vulture was the original Great Earth Mother, and where there are vultures there is safety, purity and life. Apparently in the native Zulu language, the word for vulture means the purifier, the one who cleans off the land. Now you may think that my interpretation is the worst of the lot, and you may think it's a stretch. And I do admit I am making assumptions on what the original complete drawing may have looked like. It would be a strange depiction of a vulture in pre-pottery Neolithic Turkey. But let's be honest, how many pieces of art from Gebekli Tepe are also unique? Just about everything. Going back to what I said earlier, and with any piece of ancient art, we first have to identify what we see. So let's say that this is a vulture. Then we have to see how the subject matter relates to what we know about the culture it belongs to. And we know that the vulture is a prominent symbol at Gebekli Tepe. Then we need to find some meaning. What the artist is trying to tell us. Well, if this is some kind of phallic symbol, it could be relating vulture symbolism to fertility. It could also be depicting a vulture mother goddess, or maybe it's a person wearing a vulture costume for some kind of shamanic act. I am inclined to think it's some kind of vulture deity. The iconography on the bone object is certainly open to debate, and in my opinion it always will be. Of course I can see the T-shaped pillar idea as a possibility, 
but after my own reconstruction of the design I disagree. I also disagree with the porthole and star depictions, but that is just my own opinion, and we are all entitled to an opinion. I also can't see a squatting or crouching animal as proposed by the German archaeologists, but maybe that's me not seeing it in the same way. They are of course more educated and better informed in pre-pottery Neolithic art than me. But I can see this being a possible standing vulture, wings back and head lowered, an animal depiction well within the context of Gebekli Tepe, and if correct it could well be another part of the puzzle. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.